Hello and welcome to the Start 11 prediction for the Merseyside derby at Anfield. Massive game. Look, Paul and Chris are here, so it's me giving you my thoughts. Let's just get straight into it. Massive game, let's go. So first, it's Alisson Becker in goal. Look, he's been in every single game this, this, this Premier League campaign. He's just fantastic. Look, five goals conceded. That's ridiculous. Like, only Man City have got five goals conceded. The rest, I think, are above above eight or ten or something. I should have checked that before. But it's a bigger number than five, let's put it that way. Look at that short pass percentage, man. 100% pass. And I check it every single week to think, is he actually still 100%? Because you're like, oh, is that, a, is that classed as a short pass, blah, blah, blah. It's still 100% according to the website that we use. So, you know what I mean? Brilliant. He's, he's integral to how we play, isn't he? He's fantastic in goal. But we'll move on to right back, young Trent Alexander-Arnold. I think he's just brilliant, isn't he? Look, we... we I really like his attacking his attack and play, and sometimes he can get caught out in defence, but it's one of them. I'd rather have him marauding up that right-hand side, putting a ball in. He's so good at his crossing. If we have a free kick in around the area, I want this man on it, you know what I mean? He's fantastic. Just looking at his stats there, he's got two assists, one goal. From right back, that's what you want. Obviously, you'd expect that assists-wise, but in terms of getting a goal, fantastic. Really, really good. Um, but yeah, we'll move on to Joe Gomez at centre-half. He's fantastic. He's he's like Virgil Van Dijk's understudy, and he's and he might even turn out to be just as good, if not better, as Virgil Van Dijk as he gets older. He's just fantastic, and you're watching him come up against these these these, these attacks, and he's so calm and composed. He knows exactly what to do when he's got the ball at his feet. He knows the right passes. He knows how to play. I want to see him in centre defence instead of on the right. Look, he's great on the right, but. He's just so much better in the centre with Virgil van Dijk next to him. Talking of Virgil van Dijk, I picked him next. He's just a Rolls Royce of a, of a defender, isn't he? When he's on top form, no one can beat this man. And I was there, obviously, when he, when he scored the 2-1, when he scored to make a 2-1 in the cup against Everton. And just, just he cemented himself then as one of my favourite players because what a goal, what an occasion to get it at. Just the, the, to kill all our dreams, we got to sing you haven't won a trophy since 1995 because we knocked them out of the cup. It was fantastic. He's going to be brilliant. Just look at his stats. I mean, 92% passing accuracy. We play so much through him and he's just brilliant at passing the ball, isn't he? So we'll go on to left back, Andrew Robertson. Look, fantastic player, isn't he? When we use him as a proper outlet on that left-hand side, some of the crosses he puts in are world class and the, the work rate that he puts in, just the way he conducts himself on the field, he's, he's one of my favourite players and every time you listen to him do an interview, you're like, this man is, is I'm so happy we've got him. He, he did an interview the other day and he was talking about his whole career and, and getting to Liverpool and how he needed to learn how to play Klopp's style and it's amazing just the transformation. Obviously when he came in, we could see he was a bit of a, we knew what he had but was he going to like kick on? And he has massively, and he's been an integral part of this team. Can't wait to see him play. Next, we have in the centre of midfield, Fabinho. Look, I, there's been a lot of debate, should he start, uh, obviously on the, on the build-up, which you, if you haven't seen, go and watch it. But I want to see Fabinho come into this game. I really feel like as part of a two, obviously we'll see who the next one is next to him in a minute. But as part of a two, I feel like he's just really, really solid in there. He's starting to come into his own a little bit in terms of his passing. Obviously, he's had a few bad games this season, but he's just he's just brilliant, isn't he? You, you, again, nine defensive duels per 90. He's only winning 20% of them, but he, that shows that he's putting himself about. He's at least getting himself into the positions there. And it's still really, really good interceptions. Just over five interceptions per game. That's what we want him to do in that position. Yeah, I'd really like to see him. Next to him is Jeannie Van Aldum. He's been our best midfielder this season uh, by a mile. In, in my opinion, I really feel like he's a stalwart of that team now. Obviously, one goal, we'd like to see him get more than that. But in terms of he's been playing a six, he's been playing deeper roles, so you can understand why he's not been getting too many. I'd like to see him have a little bit of licence to go forward, especially with Fabinho sitting next to him. It'd be really nice to see Jeannie Van Aldum kind of push on and assist that attack because he's really good at that. Look, we bought him as an attacking midfielder, didn't we? And that's what I really want to see. Um, 94.1% passing. I mean, that's brilliant. Obviously, he he just makes us tick in that midfield, doesn't he? And uh, he's a great asset to have. So, ahead of them, we have Bobby Firmino in the number 10 role. If you haven't already seen what I'm going to go for, it's the 4-2-3-1 with Bobby Firmino in there. Look, he's starting to come into his own in that position. It's still not clicking completely. And 
maybe this is the game where it really does click. I like the fact that he's dropping deep. I like the fact that he's starting to link up play just like he used to from the number nine position, but now he's doing it from the number 10. I want to see him do that. Look, three goals, two assists, 9.92 nine, offensive duels per 90, which is ridiculous, isn't it? And then he's only winning 40% of them, but again... It's just good to see someone trying things. Obviously, really good with his dribbles as well. So, on the right-hand side, Jen Jakiri. He's been fantastic for us this season. It's the way he drops in deep and then plays that ball, the diagonal ball to Sadio Mane or the ball over the top to, to, to Mo Salah. He's really taken on that playmaker role. And it's weird the way that we were so used to seeing Sadio Mane kind of coming into the inside last season from the left-hand side. It seems like Shaqiri's doing that a lot more. Even from a deeper position, it's really, it's re it's good to see. To be fair, it's a different aspect of, of of our game. And I was so used to seeing him at Stoke running down and being that outlet ball. It's nice to see him playing the passes. His passing so underrated. I didn't realise just how good he was at doing it. Uh, only one assist, which is you would have thought he'd get more, but maybe he'll get loads against Everton. Really, really good. I want to see him play from the beginning. But on the left hand side. It has to be Sadio Mane. There's no one else who can play there, but that, that doesn't take anything away. I think he's been one of our best attackers this season. Six goals in the league shows that, you know what I mean? Really, really good player. He's, he's always the impetus. He's always the one who's getting the ball and driving at it. Whereas we sort of use Salah as, a, as the target man up top, the ball over the top, and the ball to feet to then play off. Sadio Mane is the player where he gets it from deep and just runs at people and and tries to create stuff. Likes the overlap with Andrew Robertson. That's a really integral part of our of how we play is when Andy Robertson comes on the on the outside and then Sadio Mane can play it. I want to see him create a bit more. I want more than one assist from Sadio Mane because I feel like he's got that in his locker. He's just not produced it too much this season. That final ball has been a bit off. Still fantastic player. And the last one, you already know, it's Mo Salah up top by himself. Seven goals, two assists. You can't argue with that. He's... Look, he's been off the boil. He's not been as good as last season, but he's nearly he's like up there with some of the top goal scorers in the Premier League, and he's having an off season. That's fantastic for me. Look, the, the, it's going to be a real threat. I think once we get that first goal against Everton, we're going to have that ball over the top. We're going to have a lot more space in between the defence and the midfielder there. And I feel like Salah is the perfect player to exploit that alongside Firmino, Mane and Shaqiri. So we'll go on to the full team. Like I said before, uh, four, two, three, one. I think this is the way to go. I really like that that pair in the midfield. I think that's been really good for us. I wanted to go back to something we know where the four two three against PSG just didn't. It, it just kind of it was lacklustre, wasn't it? We've seen four two three not really work a few times this season. We're going to have a lot of possession of the ball. I want Ryan Alden to be able to pull over to Robertson to pull Fabinho to pull over to Alexander Arnold. Let them go up the wings and they can fill in. Just a lot of fluidity. It gives us a really solid base, I feel. And then we've got them from four, who are fantastic. Obviously, with the addition of maybe Robertson or Alexander-Arnold, Alexander depending on which one decides to go up in that phase of play. I think this is the team that can beat Everton. I think this is the team that Jürgen Klopp will pick, just because he knows it works. I really want to see Fabinho in there. There's some talk, I mean... You could say Keita comes in, maybe Firmino. It was an interesting point brought up is that we bring Firmino up there, put, you, uh, put Firmino in the nine, Salah on the, on the right-hand side, and then put Naby Keita in that number 10 role. I wouldn't be opposed to seeing that. I really want to see Keita play in this game. I think it's probably going to be off the bench, if I'm honest. But I wouldn't be opposed, again, to seeing maybe him alongside Van Alden in there if you're not going to put Fabinho in there. I, I think Van alden has got to play. Uh, there's all, Maybe you put Milner in there, you never know. I, Milner's one of the... He just puts himself about. He's always trying to win the ball back. He's always got so much energy and desire to win. And... That's going to carry on through the team. I feel like Milner would be a great shout. So Milner, Keita could come in there. I mean, maybe Sturridge could come in there, but I think he, we should use him as a sub, really. Um, if you have any thoughts, I mean, you could put Lovren in there, but I, I want to see them two play. I really do want to see them two play. But let me know your what you want to see, basically, because, look, this is just my opinion of what Jürgen Klopp will pick. Obviously, Jürgen Klopp will pick what Jürgen Klopp wants. But I think this is a good enough team to go out there and beat them. Like I say, you tell me if you think this team can beat them, what the score is going to be, who you want to see play instead, what formation, what kind of style you want us to go out there and beat Everton with, because we are going to beat them. But anyway, I'm wearing one of these jumpers, go out and buy them. There'll be a link in the description if I remember to do it, which I will. Uh, go out there and buy them. They're still... I think international shipping's ending soon, but if you want to get one 
for the UK, you can do, but it's limited, so go and get one now. But yeah, like I say, thank you everyone for watching. Let me know all your thoughts on this, and I'll see you next time.